Okay, so let's go ahead and build out a landscape real quick. And we're going to use slope noise. It's just a very basic uh, landscape setup, but it yields really good results. We're going to use some adjustments, maybe some filters here to kind of explain uh, how we're going to make it. I'm also rendering out the last video I made, so if it pops up after it's complete, uh, please ignore it. Okay. So let's go ahead and throw in the slope noise. We already went over the primitives, so um, slope noise we should be more familiar with. It's a very simple slope noise here. Um, let's go ahead and change the displacement. Well, rather, let's change the seed a bit. I just want something that's a little bit more flat down here. Probably something like that. There we go. And let's change the displacement around a bit so we get a little bit more displacement going on. Um, I'm going to change the scaling to be a little bit smaller as well. There we go. That looks more like what I want. And uh, let's add the stratification. And like I said, the stratification adds the, the, the stratified filter here to the noise itself rather than the entire landscape, kind of like what you would get with um, terraces. Terraces right here is similar to what it, it is in World Machine. Um, but in this case, it's going to apply the terracing across the entire landscape. So if we increase the terraces here, or rather decrease the terraces and then um, let's let's just see if we can pull them out just a bit more here there we go yeah you can see how it's adding the terraces across the entire landscape I don't want that I just want the stratification to apply to the noise only so we're gonna delete that and uh, that's what by the way that's what the terrace filter does um, it just adds little steps in your landscape kind of like what you would see in a canyon on the edges on the slopes um, but like I said we're just gonna keep it to the noise okay so after we get the uh, slope noise going and we add our stratified option to it we can go ahead and add some displacement to it so we're gonna displace this noise slightly we don't want to do it too much because we want to keep that stratified look and let's increase the strength here there we go now what that's gonna do is it's gonna kinda displace that slope noise a bit more not too much but just a little bit we can do high quality as well uh, because why not and uh, let's move on to the next thing we're gonna do uh, we're gonna add some erosion and this is really important because erosion helps define our landscape in general and I really like three different types of erosion that I use quite often. One is the breaker, the other is fold, and then the last one is just regular erosion. So let's go ahead and add the breaker. And what the breaker will do is it's going to add deep cracks to our landscape. And by default, you can see these cracks right here. By default, they're very small, like they're very subtle. You can see without, like look in this area right here, and with. We just add these cracks. We want these cracks to flow a little bit more, and we also want them to be a little bit deeper. So I'm going to change the depth to be a little bit deeper. Not much, but they are deeper, which is going to also allow them to flow a little bit more. And I'm not going to play with the duration too much, um, but I am going to increase the erosion power just slightly. Not very much, small values here and there first. And what that's going to do is it's going to fill in these cracks just a tiny bit. And we might need to change the depth a bit more, but instead of doing that, let's go ahead and hit hard cracks. And now you'll see how these cracks are a little bit more hard to find. And we're also going to change that to accurate. And there we go. Now they're more accurate in nature. And now we're going to go ahead and add the fold. And what the fold's going to do, it's going to act kind of like how you're pushing, kind of like plates. But it's going to add a more fold effect to it. You can see right here. You can see how we have our cracks right here still. And what's nice about fold is we can actually add multiple folds together. Um, you can see how we're getting like these jutting rock looking areas, which is really nice. We might need to add another breaker after these folds, but we're going to add another fold. And we're going to combine the two and what I like to do is I like to change this fold keep the default fold but change the second fold 
and you can actually change the angle and the rift and folding of the fold so first we're going to change the angle we're going to change that to uh, maybe around 45 degrees Ooh, let's see here 46 is okay again hold down shift and you can turn on your micro increments here so we can get exactly what we want and you can see how we're folding now at 45 degrees and this one is folding at zero degrees and now we're going to change the folding to a higher value we're going to say maybe 20 okay maybe 30 and that's adding some folding noise and some displacement to our uh, fold and we're going to change the rift to about 20 percent there we go and now we have these striations in the slope so we have this very basic looking one and now we have this more advanced looking one and we're going to combine them and if you click and drag from an output normally it pops up with a window that lets you choose from it there we go combine we're gonna throw in a combine node and since for some reason it didn't work on that first one oh, hold on a sec I don't know why it plays after it's done I gotta turn that off there we go. All right. So we're going to combine these two. And uh, Gaia allows you to arrange nodes very easily. They kind of uh, magnetize to the next node. So we're going to input it there and input that one there just so it's nice and clean. And we can do a ratio, uh, a blend ratio on this, but I'm going to use max. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring in the full output of this one end of this one and combine the two and I'm going to use max 100 percent there we go now we have these rockier areas down here and it breaks up the noise patterns a little bit more and that looks pretty good so that's what fold does kind of just folds the terrain inward and outward and at different angles and gives you a nice interesting look now another thing that we have to do since we have that stratification for the noise selected um, we need to find a way to add the stratification back a little bit so we have it here you can see it here a little bit but now we have these really flat areas right here which doesn't really look good once you start texturing the landscape so we're going to add in another erosion node and it's going to be the stratify node and it's only going to be very subtle it's going to be a small amount not very much and you can see how it's already affecting the landscape here we have too much here so let's go ahead and decrease the strength value to maybe five or even less than that let's do uh let's do two there we go it's a little bit more subtle and it breaks up this noise right it breaks up these flatter areas a little bit more and we're going to add substrata not a whole lot maybe six percent all right And uh, let's see what it looks like when it's not filtered. doesn't make much of a change. So let's add a little bit more substrata. And what that is is a strata inside of strata. And let's increase the strength just a tiny bit more. There we go. I, I, think, I think that'll do what we need it to do. All right. So um, let's add one more breaker. And we're going to use larger values in this breaker. So we're going to use hard cracks again, and we're going to use a nice uh, depth here. There we go. And let's increase the duration just a tiny bit. And that might be a little too much. There we go. All right. And that just breaks it up a bit more. And then our final one will be the regular erosion node, and this is very similar to the erosion node in World Machine. Go ahead and add that. And this is too much. We want to preserve that rocky outcrop looking, uh, kind of like what we had right here, where it's a little more rocky. Um, the stratifier and the breaker keeps that look a little bit, but we want the erosion in there so we can fill in some of the gaps and some of the cracks. Um, and this is too much. So we're just going to change the duration down to 1%. And you can see how that's 
bringing in those little rocky areas again. And then we're going to change the rock softness to be far less than 65. We want it to be really hard rocky type noise. So we're going to change the rock softness to be lower. That way it's not um, so soft. And the erosion doesn't affect it as much. About 15. You can see right here we're starting to get the rocks in there again. That looks pretty good. All right. Um, we're not going to change anything else in the erosion node here. Um, if you wanted to, you could um, you could change these, but I'm not going to because we don't need to in this case. This is just a very simple terrain. All right, so we do. This is our final terrain right here. Uh, very basic slope noise with some rocky outcrops, like right here, and down here, and over here, and up here. Looks pretty good. Now what we want to do is we want to texture it. So we're going to use some data maps. Data maps are maps of data on your terrain that are almost automatically used. You don't have to do a whole lot with them. Um, and I'm going to show you my favorite ones to use. The first one is the texture. And texture just kind of grabs all the information in your terrain and provides a mask that you can use for texturing. And that's why it's called texture. And you have different in modes with the texture map or the texture data maps. Uh, you have A, B, and C, and they all do something different, but I couldn't tell you exactly what they do. But from playing around with it, I f think A is like a combination of B and C. B will select kind of like the flatter areas up here and on these flat slopey areas. And C will select kind of the the steeper areas, if I'm, if I'm saying that correctly. I'm not entirely sure. And I think A is like a combination of both of those. And I could be completely wrong. That's just what it looks like after it's done building here. It takes a minute sometimes. We'll just let it build. There we go. It's kind of selecting, maybe I have it the other way. I think maybe B selects the sharp, steep areas, and C selects the not steep areas, the more flat areas. Um, but again, it just comes down to your preference and what you're trying to do. Um, nice thing about Gaia is that when you're working with these data maps, it actually shows you the mask here so you can see what you're doing in a 3D preview rather than a 2D preview like in World Machine. So let's go ahead and just use A for now. And let's add the protrusion data map. And now the protrusion selects the protruding areas of your landscape. Oh, it's going to build this out real quick. So we'll let it do that real fast. Oop. Mm, there we go. All right. And you can see where these rocky protrusions are being selected. And we can mix that with our texture map. But let's change this back to, let's do C, just real quick, just so we can see what it looks like. Because uh, it might mix pretty well with the protrusion map. You want things that mix well together. You don't want to be selecting one area, have another selector selecting that area, and then you just have it selected twice. It just doesn't work out all that well. There we go. So we are selecting these other like flat areas right here. This white, the white is where we're selecting mostly. Um, and then we have our protrusions. So now we can combine these two. And this, like I get, like I said, this is just very basic. And let's add it together. There we go. I like to have nice looking lines. And uh, we could do max on this as well. And max will bring out the full selection from both of these. Um, it's not always good to use max every time, but in this case, I am. Now, those are just my favorite data maps to use. Let's go ahead and look at the coloring here. Uh, the very first thing that I almost always use is sat maps. Sat maps is just a uh, preset selection of different textures, different color maps that you can use to texture your landscape. And that's what we get with this selection. But you can see that it's in 2D. We want it to be in 3D so we can see what it looks like applied to our landscape. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our last 3D node, which is our erosion, right-click it, 
and pin for color, or you can hit G on the keyboard. Now, when we go back to our set maps, since it's pinned for color, we can see what it looks like in 3D. Looks pretty rocky. All right. Let's choose something else that looks a little bit more interesting. And there are thousands that you can choose from. So it just comes down to what you want. My favorite in the Rocky library is 285, 284, I think. Yeah, 284. This one's my favorite. It looks really rocky. And 285 looks pretty good, too. It's not as dark. It looks pretty, pretty, pretty sweet. All right. So now we have um, this nice texture applied to our rocks. Um, it's breaking up pretty well. Now we want to have another selection for maybe some dirt or some snow. So we're going to go to selectors. We're going to select slope. And we're going to use the slope main input from the output of the erosion. And you can see where we're selecting the slope here. And we want it to kind of appear on flat and slightly steep areas. Now I find that when you're playing around with the minimum and maximum slope here, somewhere in the range of 70 to 75 is pretty good. And then increase your max so we have it appearing on these flatter and steeper areas. And we might need to maybe decrease that a bit more. And let's see what that, that, that will be the flatter areas right here. It's pretty flat. Let's make it even more flat. There we go. And let's increase the fall off a bit just so there's a little bit of a gradient. And uh, let's add this selection to a constant. And Gaia is still in production, so sometimes it does take a little bit longer to do stuff. It kind of slows down here and there. Um, if you run into any bugs, like this one, usually that happens when I use a curvature selection or a normal map. But if it does come up giving you an error like that, please inform uh, the development team. They will look into it and see what they can do about it. It's better to say something about it than to not. And we're going to increase the value to 100. And now let's add this to a quick color node. Tweet that. Quick color. And we're just going to keep black and white. And let's use a mixer to combine these two colors. There we go. Here we have our rock and our snow being blended together, but we're going to use screen with the max value. There we go. Now we have snow appearing on these flatter areas. But like I said, we want it to appear on these kind of more steeper areas as well, not just the flat areas. And this is just snow. If you wanted to change the color, go back to your quick color, and you have these options to choose from. You can choose like this dirt color, and now we have that. Or we can choose something ridiculous like, I don't know, let's do this magenta color. And now we have that. All right, but we don't want it appearing only in those areas. We want a couple selections here. So let's go ahead and make another slope. So let's copy this. And to kind of explain why I use the constant for that quick color is um, I wanted the full range. But if I wanted to go from slope to quick color, I could. You don't have to use the constant. Uh, you can even get rid of that if you wanted. But in some cases, you'll get an error message saying that you can't put a height map to a color map. Putting a constant in the middle of that really helps. And then we still have the same option here. It's just a habit to do that for me. Um, so let's go ahead and change the slope. Again, we're going to use something maybe around 78, and the minimum will be maybe 71-ish, 74 maybe, and then with almost zero fall off, 
just very small amounts. And then we're going to add this to the quick color as well. Let's change this back to white. There we go. And we're going to change this back to white as well. There we go. And we're going to add another mixer. And combine these two. There we go. Alrighty. So now we have s the slope was where our rock is and we have this snow where the flatter areas are with a little bit of a break off with the uh, steep areas. Doesn't really look all that great, um, but again, that's something that you could do if you wanted to. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this slope and just change this one. But as, as you can see, you have multiple options. You can choose um, to add more and more mixers and combine more and more textures if you wanted, or you can just stick with the basic sat map. It's all up to you, but you have options. That's all I'm saying. I'm having some problems here. <coughs> Give it some time to think about what it wants to do. It should do it. Maybe. There we go. Alright. Our links are broken down here, but that's okay. Still in production, so please make it known to the development team. I will make all these crashes right here known. I am vocal about it whenever I use it or whenever I use Gaia. I guess I should give you context. I am vocal about these crashes when I'm using Gaia. <laughs> there we go. And it's usually when I'm using selectors and uh, the color outputs, especially with the normal map maker. All right, there we go. Delete these two things. Delete, please. Okay, anyways, I'll just ignore those. Um, let's go ahead and build out our landscape. But before we do that, let's see what it looks like at a higher resolution. So right here is your viewport resolution. Right now we're set at 0.5K. Let's change that to 2. And what it's going to do when you change it to 2 is it's going to go through your entire node network and build everything out at a higher resolution. And then when it's done, we'll see what it looks like at 2K. The nice thing about doing this is you can build out your landscape at a higher resolution and when you're ready to export you don't have to rebuild it and export it at that resolution it should have a saved cache uh, while it's building when you're ready to output it with the build option it'll ask you if you want to just save the cached output and you just hit yes and it takes like like a minute to save everything out rather than having to go through visualize everything rebuild it at 2k which can take a couple minutes and then save it um, the drawback to that is you're limited in your resolution you can only go to 4k so if you wanted to export an 8k or even a 16k map or images you would still have to build it but in this case for testing building it at 2k gives us plenty of resolution to look at and we can save time by building it now and visualizing it rather than building it out twice and we can just save the cache version. All right, and as you can see here at 2K, we have a higher resolution, and we can see where everything's got. All right. So, like I said, this is just a very quick uh, tutorial example of a slope noise that you can use to build out some rocky-looking outcrops. Um, it's just very basic. We can get into more detail at a later time, do a better selection with our data maps to get a, a much more realistic looking selection of our textures and our snow things like that um, and this is just to save time without having to use the snow erosion which would give us a much better result um, but if you wanted to save time just for prototyping maybe throw this landscape into the background um, of your scene and it doesn't have to take up a lot of space you can use this uh, but that's that's about it. We have our final landscape here. So now when you're ready to build, you just hit build. Uh, we have some broken nodes. We have to fix these or else it's going to have us rebuild it all over again. Those broken nodes are these down here. Um, and they just will not delete. Well, every time I hit delete, it freezes geo or <laughs> I 
I was going to say geoglyph. Uh, it freezes Gaia. So I'm going to have to rebuild in this case every time because of these broken nodes. So I'm not going to be able to save the uh, the cached version. But if you, nothing's broken in your node graph, it should work for you. In any case, we'll just wait for it to respond again. And we'll just hit OK here. And right now it's saying we don't have anything marked for export. So we need to go back and let's right click our last erosion node here. Mark for export. Let's mark our mixer. We'll mark that for export as well. And you'll know what's marked for export because you'll see this floppy disk icon come up. It'll save it to a file. And you'll know what's marked for color because you'll see this pinwheel, this purple pinwheel, saying that it's pinned for color. All right. So those are just the two things that we're going to export in this certain situa situation. And now we have those two items here. And we can choose what we're exporting. So for the erosion, we can export our where de deposit and our flow map. And that makes it really nice because now we don't have to have a million nodes out here that we have to set up for export. We can just export it off of that one node, unlike what it is in World Machines. That makes it really nice. We can choose our output options here. So we can use PNG or TIFF, uh, Open EXR. If you're doing any kind of 3D landscape work, I recommend using at least a 16-bit PNG. I use TIFF 32-bit. Uh, choose the file format you want, the resolution you want to export out as. Uh, these are options that you can choose later on in the future. They're grayed out now because you can't use them, obviously. Um, these are be the, the basic output options that you're going to use for pretty much any 3D program. You can do a tiled output <coughs> and a meshed output. And you can actually output some level details here if you wanted. And if you wanted to output an object, you just change the file type to OBJ. Uh, I think that's all they have right now. Yeah, just OBJ or FBX. FBX will work too. Uh, if you choose to export a 3D mesh of your landscape, you're going to have to install an FBX converter. It'll pop up automatically, so you don't have to worry about downloading one. It'll just pop up automatically, and then you just install it, and then you're good to go. <coughs> choose where you want to export it to. In this case, it'll have a document in, or a folder inside of documents for Gaia where it will export um, all your stuff. You can export there if you want, or choose a manual area to export it to. And then when you're done, hit Start Build. In this case, I'm not going to. Um, I don't need to build anything out. We're going to go ahead and end the tutorial here for this slope noise. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, or if I didn't go over anything in great detail and you're still confused on anything, please let me know in the comments section below, and I will see you in the next one.